first of all, thank you for having me here. Uh, it's a nice short boat ride, and the storm wasn't too bad anymore. So, um, and thanks for for Fabio. I was just to listen to the last 30 minutes, and uh, you know he was a big part of one of one of our players, Petri Kovan, and felt like home in Bologna as a youngster. So guys like him are needed. That uh, it's not just about basketball. Um, but uh, um, I'm here kind of as a behalf of a Finnish Basketball Federation. So, um, but I, I also do believe in, 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 a, in the same same uh, thing. So, so uh, you can also consider these as my opinions as well. But I, I work for the Finnish Basketball Federation. Um, I worked full time since I retired, 2014, after the World Championships. Um, short background on myself. I uh, grew up in Helsinki. Played for the YMCA Helsinki, and then. Uh, you know, on this topic, during my senior year in high school, I had a, I got a phone call from a Spanish powerhouse team to offer me a 10-year contract. Um, but I, I didn't even tell my parents about it, and I said, no, I don't, no, that's not for me. But times have changed. It, that was 1995, so it's, it's a very different time nowadays in basketball. But um, you know, youth transfers were happening back then. Uh, but um, I chose to go to the University of Utah, stayed there for four years, got drafted to the NBA, and then came, came back to Europe and played in the EuroLeague uh, until moved back home with the family and then played a few more years and, and had a chance to kind of close out my career with the Finnish national team with two European championships and then the world championships. So um, I've kind of seen the up and downs of Finnish basketball. I've seen great examples of people leaving from Finland to Europe, US. Bad examples of people leaving, young players leaving from Finland to Europe or to US. So there is no right or wrong. There is absolutely no right or wrong. One way is the one right way to do it. Um, I think every country, every culture, every per person, every family is different. So uh, it, it's dangerous to say that this is the one way and everything else is wrong. Um, so just keep that in mind when we uh, go through this. Um, all right. Oh, yeah, it works. My bad. Okay. All right. Um, just a little background. That's the reality that, that uh, us Finns are, are playing with. Almost 100% of the global basketball players are not from Finland. And I'm sure the same is in Estonia. So let's not try to think that we can produce 10 NBA players, 15 EuroLeague players every year. That's not going to happen. And when we're when the young young players are shooting to go to Barcelona or go to Kentucky or go to whatever, you know, Finland is not in, on the top of the list of, of uh, countries where they think great basketball players come from. But we can change it. And the same thing goes to goes to Estonia. So that's a pretty good, pretty good fact to keep in mind. Um, we had a long history of players leaving to college. Um, we have a gentleman named Robert Peterson who came. He was a Mormon missionary from the U.S. from Brigham Young University. He came to Finland a long, long time ago, um, and then returned and kind of became kind of grandfather of Finnish basketball. And with, through his influence, there was a lot of players going to Brigham Young University all the way from the 60s, 70s, 80s. We got three, three NBA draft picks from those years. Um, some very good players, players who've been chosen to first five or first 10 players in Europe for all-star all -star teams at the European Championships in the 60s. So Finland basketball, had a very good, very good direction in the 60s, and then it kind of slumped for maybe 20, 25 years. Because that, we never had a professional league. I mean, it's the same now, Cottage League is the same as like in Estonia. Yes, there is professional players, but it is not a professional league, 100% professional league. So in the 80s or 90s, it was hard for a Finnish player to go anywhere, anywhere else. U.S. colleges were open because, you know, one, they wanted to recruit players from Europe, 
and you know there was no that was before the Bosman rule, so there was no there the Spanish team back in the 80s there was 10 Spanish players and then there was two Americans or one American, so player movement wasn't happening. So uh, you know it, it's it's uh, not until maybe the 90s, early 90s, that we've had a players leaving from Finland to to uh, elsewhere in Europe. And also pointing to the fact, you know, traditionally we've had over 50% of the men's national team has gone through the NCAA route. And again, it is not the one way. For some it's a great way. For me it was great. Some other players it wasn't. Um, but we have an experience, like I explained, because of our local league didn't feed players to elsewhere in Europe in the 80s, 70s, 80s, 90s. So U.S. college was a natural way for players who wanted to leave Finland, see something else, live outside of Finland, and combine that with basketball. So we have a, we do have a, a history of that. So that's a little bit of background of our our uh, our our international player movement. Currently, right now, sitting here in the first week of January, this is a situation that we have. In men's side, we have one NBA player. We have 15 players in Europe, and I, I kind of, I mean, there's, there might be some in a very low, low, low level, amateur level, but, you know, second, maybe Spanish third level league. We have 15 players, and that up, then we have, you know, we have one EuroLeague player, a couple of Euro Cup players, um, three or four. So we have 15 players in Europe, and in, right now in men's side, we have 19 players in college in the US, and 11 of those are Division One players. On the women's side, almost the same amount in Europe. It's has really grown in the last five, six years, which is great. Um, and in college, we have almost a double. 34 girls are there, uh, 15 are in Division I. Um, and I think on a, on a girls' side, it's uh, because there's, even if you become really good, unless you're a superstar, the money in Europe for girls' side, it's, it's never going to it's never going to bring in millions un unless you are top, top half percent of the world. So I, I believe in the, the girls' side, it's, it's a great way to combine academics and basketball, and then become, come back to Europe and, and be more mature and get in. Um, and we also have a few in, in the U.S. high schools. Those are mostly just normal exchange student programs. So I was actually after my first year of high school, I went to. San Antonio uh, as an exchange student. Um, I wasn't able to play because I was part of junior national teams and the Texas high school rules for whatever reason saw that I was recruited. So I didn't play the whole year, but I still wanted to go. So I practiced with the team, played pickup ball every day. First time I got to go to the NBA games live. And I actually, that's probably one of my most beneficial youth years because I, I, I just played outdoors practice with the team. So every every coach or especially every parent who thinks that your kid absolutely has to play 30 minutes every week or his career is over when they're 15, I don't believe in that. I think younger you are, practice is more important. Then when you're 20 plus 30, you don't really want to practice, you just want to play. So and we so we believe in practicing. You might rather practice so I went one whole whole year without without playing organized actual game. So and I was uh, I did just okay. A year later, I was in uh, in uh, men's European Championships as a 17 year old or 18 year old, 1995. So I survived that. So I think uh, it's something to keep in mind. The playing minutes as a youngster, it's not the most important thing. What do you do every day in practice? That's way more important. So these are some of the example ages of players leaving from Finland straight to elsewhere in Europe. The, um, the four names are orange. I don't know if you can see them. They're big enough fun. Those are the ones who left you know, before finishing high school. Um, we have very mixed experiences, for example, with those four players. Uh, like I said, there is no right or wrong. He come back with the first name. Um, he was a youngster in Finland when I was still in the States, so I, I, I personally never seen him live. 
People still talk about him. He was a great, great talent. We haven't seen him since. He's played in the fourth division of Spain for the last five years. He's uh, he's probably he's been in Spain now almost not ten years, but almost I think seven, eight, eight years, nine years. So, so he's a from our perspective, he's a bad example of going early to somewhere. He went to Manresa. So that doesn't mean that Manresa is a place not to go, but I don't know nothing about Manresa organization, but he's an example. And with uh, Suevanovic, uh, he's a, with a Bosnian heritage, grew up in Finland, but then when he became uh, closer to 18, he decided to, he wanted to uh, represent Bosnia instead of Finland, so he left Finland <coughs> and uh, actually you know, played against us a few weeks ago in a crucial game in the men's national team. He's doing pretty well, but I know he's bounced around as well. Then the rest of the, num the, rest of the names, uh, Sasu Sali, Petri Kokon, and Temo Ranniko, who everybody who follows European basketball should know, those are great examples of young men who finished high school, graduated from high school, and then left to Europe. And they were lucky, because there's always luck, whether you go to college, whether you go to, go to a team in, in Europe. They were lucky that they fell in great situations, coaches who pushed them, um, people around them were cared about them, and there are great success stories. You know, then, then as you can see, we have a few others who left when they're older, and then on the right, I don't know if these are the only ones, the two, Vilma uh, and Amit, they're the two women who haven't gone to college, who left to pro a lot, of, a lot later. Um, so as you can see, even before you know our federation really started to you know to uh, voice our opinion or or show a path, there's a history of Finns staying in Finland until they graduate from high school and feel like they're ready to go. I don't know if if, if Peter would have left three years earlier, you know, if he would be this player he is today. He could be better, he could be worse. But I put my money on that. He would have a hard two, three years. Fabio knows it well. I mean, some of, some of us are very mature early, but it's it's hard, especially coming from a northern country. We are very security-oriented people in Finland. You know, we we secure. We try to find situations where there's family, working life, where we feel safe. There's not a variables. So. Leaving early, 14, 15, 16 year old, that doesn't, it doesn't fit our model. And it doesn't only have to be with sports. On the other sport, soccer or football, right now there's a model of, of 14 to 20, almost the best youth players, every age group leaves after their ninth, ninth grade in, in school. So when they're 15, 16, they're gone. Italy, England, Spain, and this has been going on for a long time. And I think in history, we have one player who's gone to English, uh, English Football Academy, who's played any serious minutes in the men's national team. Our best players in history, Jari Lippmann and Sami Hupia, who played for Liverpool, Barcelona, they left when they were 21, 22, 23. So, um, and I, I know this is a, in some, some countries, there's, there's uh, people leave when they're in basketball, they leave early. And somewhere it works, somewhere it doesn't. But for our culture, for Finnish youth, it's, uh, I see a lot of risks. So what do we believe in? We believe to stay close to home until you graduate from high school. Stay close to your family. That doesn't mean, you know, a little later I'm going to explain, I, I coach at the HBA. You know, we are in Helsinki, so, for example, Lauri Markkanen, who is now with the Chicago Bulls, he moved with his mom to Helsinki for two years. So, a stay close, stay in Finland, have a chance to grow up as a normal youngster. Grow up, take care of your academics, value your academics, because basketball is going to stop sooner or later. Um, I mean, I know I have a lot of great teammates, great friends, from around Europe, and I, some some made incredible money. They're going to be okay money-wise. Some didn't, 
and they have no education. And I kind of like to joke around, there's only so many sporting store jobs you can have as a 35-year-old retired basketball player. You know, so uh, I, we, do, we do value academics very highly in Finland, so we do encourage our players to stay. You know, stay home, finish your high school, and then, but then, if someone feels it's his time to go, then we try to help him best way we can. But this is our, our model. And then we also believe that, that we can be the best country in Europe to develop youth players. There is absolutely no reason why we can't be the best at, at, at developing, helping youngsters to live, to, to grow on and off the board when they're 14, 15, 16. And we have the, we have the models how to do it, I, but it starts with us coaches. We need to be better, more educated, more skilled than, than our counterparts in Spain or Italy. So uh, that's one, and that's one thing in Estonia. It's totally possible. We don't have the same pro teams that Italy has or Spain has, but there's not a reason why we can't produce better youth developing programs. Then it becomes a question of talent. If we don't have the same incredible talents, let's say, that France has, you know, I can't turn something into a diamond. Oh, I, can't, I can't help anyone to turn themselves into a diamond if they have no chance to be it. But, so we can get everything out of the town that we do have. And we also, everything works around national team programs. We strongly believe what we're trying to do in the national team programs and we know that players benefit greatly. I haven't, I'm, I've been trying a few times to think about a player, at least in Finnish basketball history, who national team has been bad for their development. I mean, throw away now this current fight with the FIBA Euroleague, it, it, it's, it's not good for anyone. But if there's a, I don't know if in the history of Estonian basketball, if there's a, if there's a player who got worse because he went to play for a national team. I want to know him. And you the same. And it's unbelievable. I, I went to the Germany, in Germany last summer for the under 20 European Championships. Germany was hosting. They never won a medal in that age group. I think, or maybe they won bronze once. And I heard, I heard talk to the Germans, <coughs> excuse me, they're missing three players because they're Managers told them that it's better for them to work on their individual game during that national team, during the national window, than to go play for the national team. I mean, it's, maybe maybe they're right. Maybe I don't know. Maybe there's some injuries that they need to heal. But just I still remember that conversation, and, and it's tough when uh, you know. So we all need to work together: players, coaches, agents, managers, moms and dads. And because of the way we work, we've been working for the past 15 years. We haven't had... Okay, yeah, okay, I, I almost lied. We had one player about 10 plus years ago, men's national team, who basically said that he don't want to come and play. But I had to do it because the previous summer he didn't make a team and he felt he, he should have made it as a 12 player. So we haven't had one person, a real player, said, I don't want to come and play. I know our guys are dying to come. I know he kills Petri Kopanen when he can because of the fight with Euroleague and FIBA. So that that knows that we are trying to, we're doing something right because the players they want to come back every summer, every chance they have. Because they know these kids right here, these are their first international experience with the Finnish jersey on. Yes, they played some club tournaments here and there. But this is uh and then guys like Fabio Season. Then whether they go to college or not, a couple years later, they see him again. So these are, you know, the national teams are always a great, I don't want to say with this youngster, it's a job interview, but especially for men's level, every time you put on a national team jersey, it's a job interview. You do great in a couple games, you know, that something can always open up. <clears throat> so what are we doing right now? Um, since, like I said, about, since about 2007, 
um, you know, led by our, our head coach, Henry Dittman, and, and uh, people around him, they kind of changed the, the way we operated our junior national teams. You know, we run them systematically and professionally close, uh, meaning it's always coached by, they're coached by professional coaches. It's usually staffs are staying, staying pretty much the same. We always have a physio, every single team, starting with the under 16, boys, girls, up to men's team. Uh, we have one, one way to do it, from the youngest national team up to men's national team. Rules on the court, off the court, but it's become a, such a strong culture, which I'm extremely proud of, because I know I was, I was a pretty big part of building that culture. We don't need any real rules anymore. People know when, they, when they're 12, when they're 13, they're a couple years away from maybe getting the national team. They already know what a Finnish national team represents. But the biggest thing we did, kind of, you know, relating to the youth transfers, we started the Helsinki Basketball Academy in 2012. Basically, our mission, and I, I coach at the Helsinki Basketball Academy, our, our job is to develop senior national team players. We for men's national team and girls side for women's national team. That's it. That's our mission. Great. Everything that goes behind it. If they become senior national team players, they're going to become pretty good level pros. So we, so on the high side, we, yes, we develop, try to help every Finnish player to reach their dream. Not only national team, but to become a high level professional basketball players and as a result make as much money as you want that's part of it so that's our mission so it's a Finnish basketball federation run high school academy at the Macadamia Sports High School same high school I went to but 30 years ago we had three mornings a week two hours each day went to shoot lift felt great yes we're practicing extra and then at night we went to our own clubs, I went to my club, my high school buddy went to another club and then we would maybe meet each other on a Sunday and play. And at that time it felt great, that was exactly, that was a high level training. But what we do is when a player comes to us, he leaves our, he leaves his junior team, we are the team. So we're basically an extension of the national teams for ten and a half months out of the year. We are responsible for the players 12 months out of the year. We run their whole year program training, but obviously because we are part of the federation, they jump to the, the nationals. And just like right now here, on under 18s, over half the under 18 teams from HBA, well, they, were just, they weren't part of the practices that we run this week. Or I go back and train tomorrow. We only have the older guys and some of the younger guys. It's funded by the Olympic Committee, Finnish Basketball Federation and the city of Helsinki. It's a public high school. Um, and uh, us coaches we're, are paid by the federation. So I work for the Finnish Basketball Federation. I don't work for, for the high school. Players are usually about 16 to 19 years old. So these under 16 kids here, they can, when they, they finish ninth grade next fall, they're going to come to us. Some of them might be, still be 15. But that's, that's the age, that's the age limit. So we are high school, they go to same high school, just across the street, well not across the street, just across the parking lot. Um, we take the care of the, the academics very seriously. And we recruit nationwide. Like I said, Laura Malkan is the, was the first kid who came <clears throat> outside of the greater Helsinki area. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, since then, we've had two to four players every every year outside of Helsinki. We don't provide housing. Um, it always a, there's a there's always a way we can we can find it. We have two players from Kotka who family moved last year. Two families moved to Helsinki, hour and a half away. The, their their oldest daughter plays for HBA girls side, so it was a great match. One player came with his mom, uh, 
the Finland single mom, she was happy. She found more jobs in, her, job in Helsinki. One player lives with his sister who uh, studies at the University of Helsinki. We are in the process of starting building a big facility, not only basketball, but the whole greater Helsinki Basketball Sports Academy. Um, so we're going to have a housing in the future. But we don't want a 16-year-old to live in a housing. They need to find a family, a relative, someone in the Helsinki area to live in at least the first year, maybe second. Um, then maybe this last year he can live on his own. But it goes back to what I said earlier. Um, it's uh, We want kids to be kids. You, don't, you shouldn't be trying to be a pro when you're 14 or 15. You know, you need, just like Fabio said, you need a guest house, a person who are in charge of you. By an our model, stay home, someone who's your relative, even if you move from outside of Helsinki to Helsinki, um, help you. We, uh, we play the men's first division, one below the top league, and the girls play the top league. Um, we play against some teams of Americans, some don't. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty good level league. Um, we are usually the highest tempo team, uh, probably best conditioned, best trained, um, but um, it's a, it's a pro-am league. But our guys, our 16, 17 year old centers have to play against maybe 30 year old American center who's had 10 years of experience as a professional. So it's a, uh, and the biggest benefit is <clears throat> compared to if you would play in the top league, now he can't pass to the American or to the 25 year old Finn. If he wants to pass to someone, he's going to pass to another 16, 17, 18 year old Finn. So they, together they got to come up with the result. People were complaining how is it possible that Lauren Markan is playing in the men's first division and playing in the, in the, in the Finnish men's national team? We have Mikael Jankunen, who's a, who's a very big talent. He's a senior now. He, he's been playing for the men's national team since last summer. He started five in most of the games. And you know, he has to he has to come up. He, he needs to be the clear leader. If he goes to play in the top league in Finland for that one year, maybe two years, every time he's in trouble, he can pass to the American, to another American, maybe to a 30-year-old Finn player. So that's the biggest benefit. We wanna and we concentrate on training. The practice is more important. Yes, we want to win every game. We need to teach our players how to win, win, win. Because that competition is part of the sport. But it's, it's basically at the end, and that's the only, only thing we, that matters. But we value the training. All right. So um, my job is also um, to manage and oversee the NCAA recruiting. If a player wants to go to college after after high school, I'm the, I'm the person who um, gets the contacts um, with my background and uh, knowing a lot of people there. I probably talk to 100, 150 different schools, maybe not yearly, but you know, in my database. We usually have a, <coughs> between two and five players every year Go to go to college. Um, in a matter of fact, actually, last year was the first time, first year when someone who graduated didn't want to go to college, uh, and I was actually happy about it because people think that we are forcing kids to go to college, which is not true. So, uh, but you know, obviously, they, they see the history. Obviously, Lauren Markkanen's example helped, but it's also we have kids who come from a, you know high academic families, some. Uh, they want to study, and we also feel that it it's, uh, gives you an extra year, two or maybe four years to still play among youngsters. There, it's, it's a high level, high level basketball. It's different basketball, uh, but, but it's still high level. Um, so it gives you an extra couple of years to still grow, and uh, that's something that you want to do. And we also. And a big part of it is we don't just send them to college. I will get, I go back home to bed. Our players, they 100% pick what school they want to go. I help them to navigate if there's 30 schools interested. I try to navigate, talk to, maybe narrow down the list to 10, then they make their decisions, okay, that's five. Then they maybe visit two or three schools. 
and then it's 100% their choice. I don't make one choice, I don't, it's the kid's choice, uh, but I, I try to eliminate the, what we think are bad options. But the most important thing is, whether you are professional in Europe, you are in college, we stay in constant touch with our players. Not only calling, texting, we visit them. I just came back a couple, years, a couple weeks ago, I was in the States for two weeks, for a week, to visit two of our players, um, talk to their players there. I was, you know, they, they're happy to see someone they know. You know, go to breakfast, lunch, dinner with them, talk to their coaches, you know, let them introduce the campus, you know, they're proud of their, their new environment. Um, so that's very important. And then, especially now our head coach, Henry Kettman, you know, he, he's more the one who's in contact with the touch with the players who are in, around Europe. He visits them. Kettman is, is leaving a couple of weeks to go to go to state, States for three weeks. He's visiting Markkanen, I know, a couple of times, and he's visiting, I think, five, four or five of our top college players, the future men's national team players, the ones who have already played maybe some national team games. So we, we don't just leave them. And because of that, they want to come back. They know every time when they come back home, summer, we provide them the summer programs. We provide them the home where to practice. So we never had an issue with anyone saying no. And I know there's countries close to us who have an issue that they can't get their national team together because the players don't feel any connection to their federation. Not that they hate their home country, but they don't feel any connection to the national team. So we do, it's, it's, it, we do a lot of job with that, and, uh, and it's worked so far. And, you know, we're not agents, but, and, and, we, and we are in the process of, you know, trying to find good places where if kids don't want to go to college, what are the places in Europe that are for 18, 19 year old? What are the great places where you, you, can, you can develop? Because it, it's, it's, it's hard. When, when you're not a native, you know, and you, and you go somewhere, it's, um, you know, let's say like an example, of, you know, if you go two, two 18 year olds, let's say two 16 year old Finn and Spain, Spanish kids go to Barcelona. If they're 50 50, after a couple of years, who do you think they're going to keep? It's, it's the same way, I mean, if someone comes to Finland to play for hockey, you know, if, they, if a Finn and a, and a French player is 50-50, they're going to keep the Finn. So it's natural. So, um, we, you know, we try to, try to find and try to, the good people who can help our players when they finish college, want to turn pro or go from Finland straight to pro. Uh, but it's, a, it's something that I admit uh, we need to address that issue a lot because now the big wave of players graduate from college. It started last year. The first HBA graduate was last year. Now next next spring we're gonna have a couple a couple more. So we need to be able to help them. Um, you know, find the right managers, right right organizations because the location is like in everything. That's the that's the key. But. In a nutshell, that's, um, that's what we are doing. Um, we're not preventing anyone from leaving Finland, but um, we, we just haven't had too many great examples where, where youngsters leave. And not only, not only in, in basketball, but in other sports as well. We do have a strong history, players going to college. It is not the right way. It was good for me. Looking back, you know, I was stupid to stay all four years. I should have went to draft after my second or third year, but that it happened 20 years ago. Times have changed a lot. So, uh, but it is, I think in countries like in Estonia, where we don't have that many players, in Finland or Estonia, it is, it is, if you have 100 different opinions and people fighting, thinking that someone owns the players, rather than let's, Let's try to help the players so they help our national team programs. And then eventually they help the Estonia League as well. When they come back, you know, we have guys who have gone to college, played pro in Europe, and now they come back and finish, the, finish their careers in, in, in Finnish Scottish League. I mean, Temo Radnik was a great example. People who know him, he's a, 
incredible point guard. Had a great success in Italy, Italy, Spain, Russia. Now he's played last three, four years in, in Finland. And uh, the whole new generation of young Finnish players see him. And he's already, he's four years younger. He's 38 years old, but he's still schooling the youngsters. So um, that's our model. Um, it's, it's not perfect, there's not a perfect model, but the HBA is, is, the, is the whole point of the... HBA is more important than the junior national teams because we, we operate 10, 10 and a half months out of the year. And then when the guys who play for HBA, including Laura Markkanen, Laura Markkanen was back at our practice last end of, end of April, start of May. He was back at our HBA practice, same as, as uh, guys who come from uh, whether it be pros in Europe, their season ends, or guys who come from college back home. We, in the same summer practice, we have 16 year olds. These kids, some of these kids who are here, they're gonna, they might be playing pickup ball with Laura Markkanen or practicing with Laura Markkanen next May. Because we, we, for a short time, the start of the summer, we bring the whole HBA age groups together and then all the men's national teams and we have what we call the open gym practice. It's an organized Monday through Friday, Saturday, um, and we've been doing it for years. And it's a great, great uh, chance for the youngsters to play. And, uh, um, you know, it's, it's funny with, with the better companies every, every year, it's that the young kids are getting quicker and quicker. You know, when you, if you face someone, you know, in a pickup ball who's 18, he's never seen before, but better is not getting young anymore either. So he might be getting slower, but, um, we have we've been able to, in the last 10 plus years, to create a, a family. I know it's a cliche, you know, we have a family atmosphere, but it truly is because, um, and so players want to come back. We have three of our players, two men's national team players, our seniors, they were in the same boat here to come watch finish out of 16 or 18 teams today and tomorrow. That shows, that, that, that right there tells you something. And I know those guys, they didn't come here to party. They came here to support their high school teammates. They already asked me, young one asked me on the boat, like, who are some of the under 16 kids who are going to be at the HBA next year? And he's already gone, he's going to, he's going to college next year. So, um, work together and, and uh, help, help every player. That's, that's what it is about. But, um, do you have any uh, questions, uh, discussions, or, or examples? Yes? start to play basketball in New York Academy in your country? We, I, well usually I think it's like here, you're six, seven years old. Um, now with the, with the success of the uh, men's national team in the last almost 10 years, or since 2011 I guess, the age groups are getting bigger. So now we have our biggest age groups. I think something is about 1,500 kids. Right now they're 12 years old or something. But obviously it drops when we get to these age. So these teams are, they age group from maybe 700. Then if you compare it to Lithuania, which was to, they can pick their under 16 national team from 8,000 players. Um, so, but our academy is high school, so 10th grade up. We do have a middle school HBA, at a, at a, at a, and that's, that's a program we're really trying to enhance and get better. Um, so that, that's seventh, eighth, and ninth grade. Um, but it, it's not, a, it hasn't worked, it's hard for, to get a 6th grader to evaluate that you are a great talent in 10 years. Because let's remember, basketball players reach their potential when they're 27. So we don't, we don't take the best 16 year olds today. Because we don't have them, they're great because they're early mature, they're right now 193 centimeters strong, but in five years, they're not 193 centimeters and just as strong. So we, we try to, we try to win every tall player, quick player, we take them. Um, well, not every, we, we, obviously we can only have a certain amount of players. We have 13, 14 in our, our playing group. And then we do have five or six first graders, you know, the 10th graders who train with us until Wednesday. And then the rest of the week, they still play with the junior team. But uh, if you're a full-time HBA, you know, you are just with us. And what about money? Do you get money from, again, from government or...? Yes, like I said, we, we get funded from uh, 
um, the, the Olympic Committee, who um, funds all the federations, the city of Helsinki, because it's a public high school, and then the federation, who obviously gets a lot of its money from uh, from uh, Olympic Committee. But other clubs in Finland, we, we, we don't get them from the government. We, we take membership? Or yeah, no, yeah, yeah. yeah so that, the only one academy that is sponsored by government? Or? Yeah, we're the only one, yes. Yeah, so we're a federation run and, and, uh, and we don't we don't pay the clubs if a you know, kid comes as a 60 year old to SBA. We don't pay them. We value them. We talk about them. We work together with them. Um, luckily, it was hard the first couple of years. You can imagine there are some clubs who thought that we steal their players. Yeah. And there are some parents who thought that we destroy their kids' chances of happy youth because they can't play for the under 19 Finnish championship because all of a sudden they only play immensely. But then after the first year, second year, now it's pretty much all the clubs, they they know, you know, I mean, they, they, they value, they, they're happy that if uh, their 16-year-old talent comes to HBA. As a result, the under-19 under league in Finland is diluted because we have the best 10-plus players. But, but, is, is that the reason not to have this system? Because at the end of the day, if uh, Fabio brings an uh, Italian manager, you know, is the first question, you know, for the, the manager to ask for the player, did you win the Estonian under 19 championship? He said, no. Oh, then we don't sign it. That's nothing to do with it. They want to see how good a player you are. So, again, I, I won some junior national championships. Great, great memories. But if I could go back and jump into this model, I would do it in a heartbeat. I'll be so much more ready because our guys, no, we train six days a week. And, um, and as a result, they have our, our, we play on Thursdays, a little more back. We play on Thursdays. Rest of the league plays on Sunday or Saturday. But the federation tells us that HBA plays on Thursday, home and away. So we can keep our weekly schedule as we want it. So then we train Friday, we train Saturday morning, 9 to 12. At 12, our players are off for two days until Monday afternoon. So where the rest of Finland and the parents are in the bus playing, baking some brownies to, you know, to sell at the games, our players have whole weekend off to do academics, maybe see their girlfriend, have actual family life. So that's maybe the biggest secret that we can provide our players more free time, even though they train more and hopefully better than anyone else in the country. And they, they don't have to travel after the school, gym is right there. But you don't pay money for it, you see, you just... No, 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 no. School, food and... Uh... No, it's, it's a public high school, so they have food there. Obviously, if we go on the road, we pay for the food. Uh, we go we go to uh, U.S. once a year to play the prep school tournament. Players pay, I think, about 500, 550 euros for that. The program pays the rest. They don't have to pay anything by so coaching. Um, they pay their license, the trip to states, and then we've been charging 300 euros for a gear. They get a couple pairs of shoes, you know, winter jackets, all that. So if, they, if you go to school, you end up paying maybe eight, nine hundred a year for HBA compared to your 12-year-old girl or boy. You play the top club, it might be 1,500 a year. So it's it's not free, but it's, you don't pay you pay zero euros for the coaching. How many coaches are working in uh, We have uh, under assistant coach Ante Koskalainen, uh, who's been usual head coach here at the under 16s, uh, which is all he also he always see the incoming class to HBA. Uh, we are full time basketball coaches, and then we have a, our men's national team strength coach Jussi Hirvonen. Uh, who represents experience for us, 64-year-old gentleman. He's, he's, uh, he's paid by the Federation. <laughs> On the girls' side, it's saying they have three. They have basically three coaches. One is basketball slash strength coach. So we have three basketball coaches, one strength coach, every single trip, every single practice. And then we do have a manager slash third assistant who, who also works at the middle school SBA. But every day there's three so right now, Antti is here with under 16, I'm here 
So our strength coach used to be, he runs more physical practice today. I go back tomorrow, it's two of us. And we'll coach you full time? Yes. But my only job is to coach um, HBA, the, the, rec the recruiting, which is some years it's a nightmare, especially if you ask my wife because the time difference. I'm on the phone at midnight, one o'clock, talking to coaches. Um, but it's, it's it's very it's that way we can help the players. It's a, I mean when when you hear that the guys they they really value what we do for them. That 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 makes it worthwhile. Um, and then I don't know, summertime we are always part of national teams. No, I'm this with under 16. I'm with our our uh, men's second team or the younger version. Um, so I'll be at the university games next summer. Uh, so that's my uh, my program for summer. Uh, uh, how how you can keep away agents? Do you have any special uh, commitment to sign no. the players? No. Do you do you do you talk with a player or do you talk with a player? Yes. When when we when we uh, when we see someone who we think as an eighth or ninth grader who maybe maybe one of uh, we think that we should try to get to HBA. If they're from Helsinki, we we uh, invite him and his parents to visit us. We talk. This is what we have to offer, and we don't just talk about three-year program. Okay, do you have an ambition to go to college? Well, then it's all of a sudden seven-year. If you want to go to pro after three years in high school, now so where are you in ten years? So we, um, you know, we have a player who uh, who I know Real Madrid and and a couple couple places wanted. And you have to make a choice whether go Real Madrid as a 16 year old or somewhere, somewhere else, Gran Canaria, or come to us. It's, we, our job is to be so good so there's, no, there's not a, one reason for a top level Finnish player to leave Finland before he graduates from high school. That, that's a part of developing men's national team player. That is our, we need to be that good. And, and I, I'll be the first one to raise my hand and say if we're flu, if we're not. If you asked me 15 years ago, uh, our national team programs, they weren't good. So I would, I'll be lying if I said, yeah, we have great national team programs. But now we do have, now it's a matter of how good our coaches, how good we are, and the ta talent level. I mean, if you don't have talent, and especially mental talent, you, I mean, you can, you can help. One more? How many days? Students have during the summer. Usually, uh, our strength coach used to get one and tells how many days you have. But uh, usually, we uh, I don't we don't believe in there's no off season anymore. Like back in the day, season's over, boom, one one month, nothing. What happens? Your 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 physical level drops during the season. Then one more month, then you start at the same spot. Some players, we usually try to keep them out maybe a week. Some players take a week and a half. Some players, after th two days, they're back with the shooting. Um, but then the spring, so we, our season ends, I don't know, March, April, maybe March, April. You know, we train, because depending on your age group, your national team summer is pretty close. So we, we train through. Then after the national team, we might give them a week off, someone who needs it. Young guys, maybe they don't. Um, so it's, it's a little bit individually, but I would say a week to two weeks until we get back together and, 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 uh, and train. But it's different kind of training, obviously, uh, than uh, during the season. All right. Uh, one question. Yes. About uh, states. So uh, uh, you said that uh, you let uh, the player himself to uh, choice the, or you choose the university. Mm -hmm. Did I understood correctly? Mm -hmm. So uh, how they can choose this? Uh, well, back in the days, back in, I can tell you honestly, back in the day when I was, there was no internet, there was no FaceTime calls. You get actual letters. These kids these days, they don't know what a letter is. But now you can watch every game online. You can talk to the coaches face-to-face, -face, on a FaceTime or Skype or whatever. 
Um, the assistant coaches they're recruiting, I talk to the organization, I, I talk to someone who knows about the organization, I try to find the good, bad and ugly. If there's any ugly, obviously then we don't we don't want the players to go there. But any, um, any way behind of this, uh, is, are, are your contacts, yes? Absolutely, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I, as I, I have what I need to, although there's a lot of basketball players and a lot of people in the States. Okay. With, I, I lived seven years there. It's amazing how small even the U.S. basketball community is. You know, I played for the high-level college team, famous coach and NBA. It's, all, it's more than every other program has someone who's either played against me, coached against me, or, or was a friend of someone who were close to us. So it's a, obviously it helps. And it's, Henry Detman did this 20, 30 years ago. He did this, you know, for me. And for Laura Mark and his dad and, and a lot of other players. So I'm just, I'm doing it now. And it's, it's a job that never ends. So it's, so it's hard for me to, you know, and I'm, I'm a pleaser. I, I try to take care of everybody else before I take care of myself. So it's hard for me to, okay, I need to call that coach, but it's, it's already midnight. Uh, all right, if I don't make that call, what? So, uh, but it's, uh, you get better at it, but it doesn't always oh, doesn't work. I mean, everything might look good. They, they go for visits. You know, player can visit five schools. The school can pay everything. Everything looks great, and then it doesn't work. But just like Fabio said, it doesn't work. Sometimes it doesn't work. And like I said, college basketball is, is definitely slower than European basketball or NBA. Um, some programs are, so the type of game, uh, it's different, and that's you know, you know, it's, for some it's, it's not the best way, best way to go. Some places you give up, give up better, but um, it's still a place where you grow as a man, and, and uh, you can you can continue academically. So um, there's no right or wrong. Actually, I have 15 more questions. Okay. We need to start. Okay. Thanks. All right. Thank you.